जो हम बात कर रहे होते हैं ना जब भी स्पोर्ट्स की अब तो रुझान शुक्र है बदलता जा रहा है और चीज़ें बेहतरी की तरफ जा रही हैं कि खातन भी इस मैदान में आगे आ रही हैं कोई भी स्पोर्ट्स हो किसी भी किस्म का चाहे अब क्रिकेट अच्छा पाकिस्तानियों की जब बात की जाए ना कौन सा स्पोर्ट्स स्पोर्ट्स जब बात होती है तो नेशनल खेल तो हॉकी है लेकिन माइंड में एक चीज़ आ रही होती है क्रिकेट और yes. अब तो वर्ल्ड कप फीवर भी है लेकिन उसके साथ साथ हमें ये नहीं भूलना चाहिए कि और बहुत से खेल हैं जिसमें पाकिस्तानी अपना नाम कमा रहे हैं और पाकिस्तान का नाम रोशन करें जिस तरह के वॉलीबॉल बिल्कुल जब बात वॉलीबॉल की है हम बात करते हैं पाकिस्तानी लड़कियों की खातन की कि उनके लिए क्या मौाक़े हैं वॉलीबॉल जहर एक ऐसी गेम जिसमें हमने खातन को कम देखा उसमें ज़्यादा ज़्यादा मसाला इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के भी हैं हमारे कुछ लॉजिस्टिक इश्यूज भी हैं हमारे पास नहीं होते और सबसे पहले तो हम एम्पावर नहीं कर पा रहे होते सपोर्ट नहीं कर पा रहे माइंड सेट चेंज करने की भी बड़ी जरूरत है एक लड़की जो है वॉलीबॉल भी खेल सकती है तो एम्पावर स्पोर्ट्स अकेडमी किस तरीके से ये पाकिस्तान में वॉलीबॉल को फरोग दे रही है हमने चंद हफ्ते पहले इस पर सेगमेंट किया था लेकिन अब एक इवेंट होने वाला है इन इस्लामाबाद जनवरी 2024 में और उस इवेंट की क्या तैयारियां हैं क्योंकि ये एक इंटरनेशनल इवेंट होने वाला है इसमें पाकिस्तान की टीम तो है ही है लेकिन हम इसको ज़्यादा होस्ट कर रहे हैं और इसमें बहुत से और मुल्कों की टीम्स आएंगी कैसे यहाँ तक पहुँच पाएंगे कितना खूबसूरत ये मेला सजने वाला है वॉलीबॉल के मैदान में इस पर बात कर दें एम्पावर स्पोर्ट्स अकेडमी से जुड़े बहुत से लोग आज हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं हमें ज्वाइन कर रही हैं अलीशा जुनेद और इसके साथ साथ हमें जरलीना ने भी ज्वाइन किया है और इसके साथ मार्क बंडार ने दस साल का आपका एक्सपीरियंस जी नेशनल वुमेन वॉलीबॉल पैक ट्वेल्व कोच इसके साथ ओलंपिक प्रिपरेशन आपने करवाई है वेलकम टू द शो ऑफ यू जी हाउ यू डूइंग टुडे Mark, starting from you. <laughs> Fantastic. It's great to be here. Great how to long have you been here Just, in Pakistan? Just uh, about ten days so far. And, you know, I arrived in Karachi. So, how is Pakistan treating you so far? Oh, fabulously. It's been a, it's been a wonderful. It's the first time I've been here, mm. and it's just been the most uh, warm welcome that I've had. I think anywhere I've ever been. जबरदस्त जी और अलीशा जुनेद जो हैं एकेडमी के सदर भी हैं और नेशनल वॉलीबॉल प्लेयर भी हैं अलीशा कैलिफोर्निया से हैं एंड हाउ आर यू प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर दिस इवेंट या सो वी डूइंग अ लॉट ऑफ प्रिपरेशन राइट नाउ इट्स गोन बी अ रियली बिग इवेंट एंड इट्स गोन बी द फर्स्ट टाइम द वुमेन्स नेशनल वॉलीबॉल टीम इज ब्रिंगिंग टीम्स फ्राम अदर कंट्रीज टू कम प्ले सो राइट नाउ वी रियली वर्किंग ऑन गेटिंग फंडिंग बिकॉज दैट्स आई गेस आर बिगेस्ट इशू एंड वर्किंग विद एवरी is really getting funding to make these events happen so we're bringing in teams from all over we're bringing some from the US some from China we're sending out invitations to other countries in South Asia to bring their national teams but right now our biggest preparation is just organizing the tournament finding out how many teams getting funding so we can really make this an enjoyable event where people will come want to come watch and celebrate with us mm -hmm. एवरीवन वन वेलकम इन और जरलीना ये तो हमने बात की लेकिन अलीशा से अब अगर हम पूछें अलीशा से बात की सर जरलीना आप यहाँ से देख रही हैं इसको सारा जो जरा लॉजिस्टिक है कैसे आपने सपोर्ट करना है इस सारे माहौल को तो आई वुड लाइक यू टू लेबोरेट हाउ आर यू यू नो पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन दिस इवेंट हाउ आर यू मेकिंग इट हैपन श्योर सो ऑबियसली आई वॉज इन इन्वॉल्व एट फर्स्ट बट आफ्टर सींग अलीशा एंड ऑल द वर्क शीज डन आई वॉज रियली रियली इम्प्रेस एंड आई डू थिंक दैट वुमेन स्पोर्ट्स शुड भी सेलिब्रेटेड इन पाकिस्तान एज वेल So I decided to do my part. Obviously, Alicia like lives in California, so I think it's nice for her to have someone over here to like handle things here in preparation for the event. We've been like uh, giving balls and like equipment and things like that, distributing things, planning things such as that. I'm also involved in the health side of things, so I'm trying to reach out to hospitals, organize annual checkups, mental health services, physical therapies, things like that that aren't really. made important usually especially for female sports <laughs> do that but yeah so so alisha what are your plans how can we encourage and empower female participants to come forward so we actually have a lot of plans we're working with empower on right now some of our main ones are actually creating the u21 u19 and u16 teams so any girls that are interested in like playing volleyball or just competing in a sport we really encourage them to reach out to us because that's something we want to do. Another thing we're also working on is actually we're bringing the national team to Turkey next week. Mhm. Mm and we're really excited about that opportunity. They're going to go um we have a really amazing volleyball coach Giovanni coming to train the girls along with them meeting the na uh, the Turkish national team. So that's going to be a really great opportunity, but that's also been one of our most hardest to plan mm -hmm. events because unfortunately The federation doesn't have a lot of funding for women. They're really being supportive 
and trying to help us in every other endeavor, but they can't give us money because they don't have so much of it. So right now we're really working towards, we just got their visas yesterday and today we're working on it. And we really want to thank the departments that the girls all play for because they've been a great help. They've been paying for their tickets to Turkey, but we're still struggling to find um, stay and food for them while we're in Turkey. So mm -hmm. that's also another big help if anyone knows or would like to donate, we would love to get that support because we really want them to have this opportunity and the time is kind of running out till we have to go. And we know it's going to help the team so much. This is the first time this team's going to be going abroad and really learning from a bunch of other really good teams in Turkey. And, and what, is, what is the eligibility criteria if anyone wants to participate? Yeah, so the eligibility criteria for the Turkish thing is we just really want funds. Mm. We have the team set that's going, the 12 girls that are narrowed down and our coach. But we really like anyone who maybe even knows of a place that might be accessible for us to maybe mm. rent or go to, that would be very helpful because we really need to get the girls a comfortable place to stay while they're there and also food and other things. It's just, we really want everyone to enjoy the sport and we want them to go out and learn from other people and then come back from Turkey and teach it to all these other girls in the nation. Great. And Mark, how long have you been training Pakistani uh, players? Uh, just, just for about uh, a week and a half so far. Uh, so it was completely new to me when I arrived last week and it's been, it's been a great experience. I think obviously starting women's volleyball in Pakistan um, has been a big task and getting that culture of volleyball like Alicia said with your under 19s, the mm. under 16s, that younger age is important to grow the game but they're a, a group of, of hard working women and it's, it's great to work with them. We, we're work, we've got to improve for sure but that's, that's what I'm here to, to help with and that's why they're going to Turkey as well and so it's just you know we'd like things to happen instantly but they don't mm. so, um, but, so but we're working at it but the key thing is they have a great attitude and with that great attitude, they'll, they'll get better. But obviously, things take time. <coughs> they do, unfortunately. But they have potential. <laughs> yeah, oh, there, there's hmm. no doubt. I, I think they can, be, they can be very good volleyball, very good volleyball players one day, inshallah. Well, what what was the difference have you, uh, have you have seen in Pakistani volleyball players, like you have been coaching players. internationally hmm. as well? What was the difference? Well, I, obviously, the international players have the benefit of having a, a lot longer uh, time, experience and mm -hmm. high level competition. I think Pakistan hasn't had that uh, option so far. So it's really just a matter of experience and you can't get experience unless you just, like you said, you go through the time to do it. So mm -hmm. we just need to take this team, get them better and then really start to develop that younger age group. So by the time a, a 13 or 14 year old comes to the national program at 19, they've had six, seven years of experience. Now they've had none. So we're just, we're playing catch up basically. Okay. And Zerlina, for any event to be successful, we need sponsors. Of course. For cricket, we have sponsors. <laughs> of course. For volleyball, we don't have it. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing for that? Well, we're trying. We've, I know they've reached out to a lot of people, I mean, in Pakistan and outside of Pakistan. So I think that, I mean, a lot of people are very supportive. And I think there's definitely some that are looking good and some opportunities that are out there. Obviously, can't say anything yet, but the So we're hoping for good? Hoping for good <laughs> sponsors, yes. Please say uh, but any, any expectations from the government, especially yeah. the government of Pakistan? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the government for volleyball, they work through the Volleyball Federation. Mm. And like I've mentioned before, they do have funds, but unfortunately not so much. So we really need to work to find sponsors that are willing to help us find even just individuals who are willing to just sponsor small, small parts mm. of what we're doing, even if it's not overall. It's just that the government, they have limited funds and right now, not so much of it's coming to the mm. women's. They're really trying, but we really need to improve our program to get to a point where we're bringing in a lot more sponsors because unfortunately the Federation isn't able to split their limited funds between both men and women's at the moment. And for, for new players, for more players to come, come in, what are the steps we need to do for grassroots level? Because we don't see girls playing volleyball in schools. Yeah. We don't see girls playing volleyball in the streets. Yeah, so unfortunately, actually a fun statistic is that volleyball for men's is the second or third most played sport in Pakistan because it is so accessible for them to go play out in the dirt, out in the grass. So what we really want to do is start implementing volleyball programs in schools where we'll just make, um, we'll provide the schools with some nets, mm -hmm. some balls, have them sort of run it. 
um, run these little stations where they can teach the kids volleyball. And even if they don't have a really like high level coach or anything, at least they're getting some experience playing, touching the ball. And then we also are really trying to work on creating programs for grassroots level kids. So our actually main goal as Empower Sports Academy is to create um, a massive internationally standard facility, not just for volleyball, but for all indoor sports, specifically for women. And from there, we really want to train the passionate grassroots level kids who are willing to put their all into this sport. And that's going to be our main goal from then, is really just focusing on the younger age groups. But for now, we're just working on implementing small little programs into schools where we can send them videos on how to pay, play the basics of volleyball, what they can do to really pick up the sport, and then just spreading it abroad, like having people take a ball, touch it, play with each other, even if they don't know the rules as much, it's still a really fun sport. Even to if play. they're not heighted? Even if they're not heighted. Because we see if you have height, <laughs> you are a good volleyball player, isn't it, Mark? Well, it, it Is helps. it just one factor? It's one factor, it helps. And certainly if you're smaller, you just need to jump higher. Mm -hmm. You know, so <laughs> you, you, can make up for, you can make up for that. There's been some very successful teams that aren't big, but you can't teach height. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got it or you don't have it. So it's definitely an advantage, but you know, smaller players can be faster, quicker. So, you know, you can sometimes bridge that gap. Yeah. And, and, and Alicia, what do you like most about playing volleyball as a, as a female? As a female, volleyball, women's volleyball and men's volleyball are very different sports. Mm -hmm. In women's volleyball, it's a lot more technical, it's a lot more logical. There's a lot of things to think about. Men's volleyball is a little more just hit the ball as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a fun sport to watch. But I, what I really like about it is, one, it gives me a community of people. Mm. I meet a lot of new people, especially in Pakistan and even back home, that you can connect with. Second, it's a very technical sport that you can play really well, really develop. And there's a lot of thinking to it. There's so much strategy that you have to learn and play with. And it's just, there's so many aspects to the game. There's a lot of depth and it's just really fun. So. And what, what cities have you seen where we can say volleyball is much easier for female, but it's difficult for female in few other cities. What have you seen in Pakistan? Yeah, so I don't think it's particularly in any place okay, easier. Okay, it's, it's nationwide, it's the yeah, same thing. Yeah, it's nationwide, kind of the same level. Mm -hmm. It starts becoming harder when there's less facilities. Okay. But what I've noticed in Pakistan, there really is very, very limited facilities throughout. It's not just one place has less or another has less. I think the biggest thing is just really teaching the sport okay. kind of correctly, having people who really understand the sport, teaching the basics. Because once you learn the basics, the rest of volleyball becomes a lot more easy to understand and easy to develop in yourself. So is it just the logistics support? Is it just the infrastructure? Or you think that there are a few other factors as well, the hindrances as well from the family, from the society, hmm. from all around? There is a couple other hindrances. I feel like one of what we've noticed is even going to smaller villages instead of big cities, families will let their girls play, but they want a safe space, which is what we want to create by making small facilities everywhere. So it's enclosed, women are on their own, it's a little more safe from other people. Because what we've noticed is everyone wants their kids to go out and play sports, but you have to be safe while doing it. Yes. And unfortunately, sometimes, some places aren't as safe for women to just go out and play on the street. But what, we've, what we have noticed, fortunately, is even on the national team, everyone's families, parents, fathers, everyone's super supportive of them playing. So luckily, the culture here is such that people want to play. They just don't really have the opportunities mm. and the places to so play. So there is no hindrance. They don't so have resources. Resources. Zalina, resources. you want to add on this, that the hindrances we are facing in Pakistan, we are now overcoming those yeah. hindrances. And, and also, I would like you to give a small message to all the women who are watching this show uh, right now. I who think, want to play volleyball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a big thing in this country is definitely safety. Especially, like, everyone wants their sisters to be safe, their mothers to be safe, their wives, their daughters. Everyone wants, like, the females in their life to be safe safe in Pakistan and I think it's a common misconception mm -hmm. that it isn't safe for women but it actually is and um, with all the facilities and everything it's definitely very safe and I'm glad to hear that they're all 
all the families are really supportive and everything. I think if you're a woman in Pakistan and you want to play, I think you should definitely reach out to Empower. I think that would be great. Um, they're always looking for people to reach out, so that'd be lovely. Or just honestly get out there, see what you can do, see like who you can contact. I know it's hard to find places and people that'll give you those opportunities, but they do exist, so definitely try your best. Mark, your message to our audience, especially to the females volleyball who wish players. to play volleyball but they don't have the resources. Uh, you know, I, I think culturally, I don't understand culturally here, mm. but certainly that opportunity to get out and just play. It doesn't have to be volleyball, but to get out and run Any around, throw a ball, catch a ball, just do those type of things, to, to find opportunities to do that. And then they'll soon, they'll, once they play volleyball, they will fall in love with volleyball. It's just one of those sports. It's a great sport. And, you know, I, things are changing. As you, as you probably well know, and you, you know, we're starting to see a greater participation. And you have a huge country here. You know, it's the fifth biggest in the world. Yes. Imagine if you could tap that, the female population into, you know, volleyball and then basketball and other sports like that. Pakistan could do some amazing and things. And we will. And, and you will. <laughs> Inshallah. And you will. Alicia, Zarlina, Mark, thank you so much. All the best for the event. Going to happen in January next year.